Hi, everybody. Today is Friday, August 26, 2022. I am man with new haircut. Not sure I like the haircut, but that's fine. Um, we are back, and we're going to do some more exorcism, elixir exorcism to be specific. Uh, what do we want to do today? Um, let's talk about... We'll do bit strings. So, bit strings. Um, Working with binary data is an important concept in any language, and Alexa provides an elegant syntax to write, match, and construct binary data. It does. It's actually very cool. In Alexa, binary data is refer referred to as the bit string type, binary data type, not to be confused with binary data in general. In a specific form of a bit string, which we will discuss in a later exercise, bit string literals are defined using the bit string special form bracket 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 bracket, <laughs> or greater than, less and less of them greater than greater than. Um, when defining a bit string literal, it is defined in segments. Each segment has a value and a type separated by the uh, colon colon operator. The type specifies how many bits will be used in, used to encode the value. And if the value of the segment overflows the capacity, or no, blah, 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 blah. let me read, let me reread re that. Each segment has a value and type separated by the colon colon operator. The type specifies how many bits will be used to encode the value. If the value of the segment overflows the capacity of the segment's type, it'll be truncated from the left. So here we go. Um, this is not going to be my specialty uh, again. <laughs> um, I've, I've used this a little bit, um, doing uh, some very crude um, uh, encoding for like um encryption things um but uh yeah i don't know we'll take a shot at this so uh this defines a bit string with three segments of a single bit each um so for example uh we're just gonna say zero zero is the value size one is the type and that's gonna return um this so basically the value is zero the size is just one um and here we're gonna say two uh, that's stored through the size of three and that'll return that. Um, that is true. That is also true because of the overflow. So when you say two and one, it can only Oh, this is going to be trouble. This this could be recursion. This could, this could be regular expressions all over again. Um, when writing binary literals, we can write them directly in base 2 notation by prefixing with the 0b. So 0b, bunch of binary, uh, that'll equal 2001. By default, bit strings are displayed in chunks of 8 bits, a byte. Constructing when we can combine bit strings stored in variables using the special form bit. So this is three long. That that actually reads better because like you can kind of like understand it a little bit. Um, combine. Oh, I guess when you combine it, you're just you're just chaining them together. So that's why it equals forty nine. Pattern matching, um, pattern matching can also be done to obtain values from within the special form. This is actually the thing that I've used the most, where basically you say, this is typically used with, um, uh, to grab like headers off of a binary stream. Um, that's like been really valuable where you can say, you know, here's your binary, here's your, your bit string. And then you can pattern match it into this and you can say, you know, I want to grab the first four uh bytes um and then just capture the rest of it in rest and then validate and say yes these were the first four so zero one one zero that was the first four uh cool oh no dna encoding oh we need to do bit strings and also tail call recursion all right so uh when recursing through intervals list by bit strings and strings, there are often two concerns. Um, how much memory is required to store 
the trail of recursive function calls and how to build the solution efficiently. To deal with these concerns, an accumulator may be used. An accumulator is a variable that is passed along in addition to the data. It is used to pass the current state of the function's execution from function call to function call until the base case is reached. In the base case, the accumulator is used to return the final value of the recursive function call. Accumulators should be uh, initialized by the function's author, not the function's user. To achieve this, declare two functions, a public function that takes just the necessary data as arguments and initializes an accumulator, and a private function that also takes an accumulator. In Elixir, it is common to pre it is a common pattern to prefix the private function name with a do underscore. Interesting. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of do underscore. I don't think I've ever really referenced it as like a norm defined by the language. Um, curious if that's part of the Elixir docs. Um, the use of an accumulator allows us to turn recursive functions into tail recursive functions. A function is tail recursive if the last thing executed by the function is a call to itself. More on tail cop call optimization stuff there. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, we're gonna take a shot at DNA encoding. This is like I feel like I've done this before on Alex on Exorcism multiple times. Um, in your DNA research lab, you've been working through various ways to com press your research data to save storage space. One teammate suggests converting the DNA data to a binary representation. For example, nucleic acid, uh, there's you know five symbols representative of space A, C, G, T. In binary, we could represent those as you know all zero, one, one zero, zero one zero zero, and so forth. Um, you ponder this as you will Potentially half the required data storage cost, but at the expense of human readability, very dangerous. Um, you decide <laughs> you decide to write a module to encode and decode your data to benchmark your savings. Okay. All right, let's take a shot at this. Uh, we're going to download the example locally. And we will open this up. Yes, code. And let's see here. Um, we'll open up the, uh, actually, let's put the readme file up here. And then we'll put the test file down here. I feel like we need the readme more than we need the test um, front and center. Um, I'm going to make this a little bigger for a little bit of time. Um, Okay, so encode nucleic acid into a binary value. Implement encode uh, nucleic nu nucleotide. I'm not saying that. To accept a code point for the nucleic acid and return the integer value uh, for the encoded data. So, for example, when you pass in A, you should get back uh, the binary thing. Okay. Um, so we should just be able to do this with a case statement, right? So given the code point, if the code point is, um, how do you do space? Uh, well, you could just do, so they're using capitals. Okay, so we could just do capital A is returns a, um, Binary of one, and then let's see returns a binary of a, a one o g returns a binary of a one o o, and t returns a one. And then we could just do a catch all for space. I don't know if that's going to bite us in the butt. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll just try this out. Um, describing code to a four put. Yes, one. Okay. So we'll run 
test at cursor. All right, that looks good. Um, let's move on to number two. Decode the binary value to the nucleic acid implement. Decode, decode to accept the integer value and return that. Okay. Um, I mean, once again, we can use case, right? Case encoded do. And then I guess it would just be the opposite, right? 0B, zero 001 zero zero would return A, 0B, zero 010 zero zero would return C, 0B, zero, 0 would return G, 0B, zero 1000 zero 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 would return P. And then whatever else, we'll just assume it returns space. Um, what is the, I don't know if it's just single quote space. Let's, uh, let's run the test and see how this works. This failed, um, 32. You just return 32. Okay. Um, we'll do this. We're going to make this say 32. And I'm actually going to space. I'm going to say space value. I want to just say space value there. And I'm going to do that just because it's a little bit more. 32, like, you'd have to be like, why is it 32? Not very descriptive. By saying space value, it can be descriptive. And also, like, if you needed to, some documentation up here. Um, to express it. All right. Uh, implement and code to accept a char list uh, representing nucleic acids and gaps uh, and return a bit string of the encoded data. Okay. So given that you would return uh, that kind of bit string. So 18.4.8. Eight. So that is the 18, that's four, and that's the eight. Um, okay. Uh, so what are we doing here? So we're going to need to do like the cur recursive. Uh, so we'll probably need a do encode with a DNA and an accumulator. Um, so that would just be like, that would just call do encode. And then then eventually when when the DNA uh dot DNS DNA when the DNA is um empty because you would you, you're constantly be taking stuff off so like when it's eventually empty um you would just uh stop it uh, constructing pattern matching <clears throat> All right. Um, I don't know what I want to do there yet. Uh, so this is going to call do encode with an empty 
accumulator. So that would just be um, zero size four. Another So when we say size, we're basically saying working with binary data, the bit string type, the binary data type of the specific in a second, in a later exercise. Bit string literals are defined using the bit string special form, defining a Segments. Each segment has a value and type separated by the column. The type specifies how many bits will be used to encode the value. The value of the segment overflows the capacity of the segment located to the left. Um, so in this case, they create a bit string literal that's got three segments. First segment is got a value of zero and a size of one. It's got a size value of one, size of one, value of zero, size of one. And so that's represented in this bit string. Similarly, if you say two with a size of three, then that That's going to be represented this way. I'm trying to remember my uh, my old school uh, binary um, <laughs> rules. Um, yeah, like what is this in base two? Um, Bit string is a fundamental type in the way we denote it with the blank syntax. A bit string is a continuous sequence of bits in memory. A complete reference about the binary computer. Uh, a bit string is made of many segments. You see, the type there are nine types. It's in binary. Um. Lost in the woods here. Um, code implement code to accept a char list representing like gases and gaps and return a bit string of the encoded data. So this is going to return this. Um, the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to like split it, right? Because you can't just take, it's not one character by one character. Like you need to break it up into spaces because those are, um, I don't know if you can do that though. Uh, I mean, you could definitely use because it's a char list, and char lists are just like normal lists. 
Um, but we haven't learned. Learned. Yet. No, we didn't. Um, they're available to learn, but they're not a dependency that string, so we shouldn't don't have to. Uh, flatten, fold. We could use fold. Basically, fold would basically be, you know, here's the list, here's the accumulator, and then here's the function. And then for each element in the accumulator, you would, you know, the thing. Let's try that. Um, this is going to start with the DNA. Accumulator is just going to start off. What is an empty DNA? <laughs> oh, this is like, uh, this is not what I'm good at. Um, Can you do like an empty bit string? Well, it's just that. Um, okay. So let's say the accumulator starts as an empty bit string, and then we've got the function. Um, that's just basically going to uh, encode the initial um, element and then uh, struct bit string uh, okay do you have to say bit string? I mean, basically, that's just going to encode. It's going to encode that, and then it needs to add the. It needs to add the uh, tail, if there is any. Um. which you kind of need to know if it's first or not. It's last. Uh, which fold L, would that ever tell us what the first one is? No, they don't want us to use fold L to even. They want us to use recursion. Um, want us to like, they want us to break it up. So like they want to say like okay so take the DNA and you know do like the pattern matching thing into the uh, rest like this is what they want us to do you know um, Because you're not given the 
IEX. Um, um, Uh... I mean, I'm trying to think if like you want to pattern match into the um the thing. So like, if you had like, let's say, let's say you had DNA equals, I guess that's the DNA. Um, you could capture the first ones, right? Like you could say. X, Y, and then you can't just, you can't just say X, Y, and then rest. You can't, you can't take the first two off the head. Um, I mean, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to give him the secret. Um, So we need to break that list up, but it's not like, it's not a list where we're processing it element by element, but more we're taking the first two of them off. So how do you do that? Uh, head tail I mean you could do it like you could do tail like you could do a recursion and then like you could have the accumulator store the head that's not what you want Um, maybe I'm, I'm think I think I'm thinking about this too much. Like I'm I'm reading it like AC is one unit, but like when you encode, it's just one by one. So. I think I'm 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 over analyzing this here. Uh we'll say DNA. This is gonna start with a empty. And then so we'll do head, tail, and the accumulator. And It'll call do encode. Um, the tail, and then the accumulator will be accumulator code head. 
for them. Do would just have to be an in. Do. Do encode. And when it's empty list, accumulator, and two, they'll just return. Uh, I don't know if this is how you actually do, um, All right, so this calls encode, it pays space, and empty quote, and this did not match any of them because uh, DNA is not pattern matching into list. It's just 32. Um, I mean, you could pattern match into, you get the size? I guess it's four. So, size four. Uh, and then you would do the rest thing, like. Value for rest get string. So this would take a bit string. It would capture the very first value, understanding that the size is four, and then we'll put whatever else is in rest. Um this is actually appropriate. And then it would encode value call rest and then when it's empty then it would uh Value will never return to the first argument, success typing arguments. Um, first argument was a space, the second argument was an empty string, which, like, I don't know. I don't know the best way to represent an empty bit string. I keep saying bit string and I guess you call it zero B maybe. I don't think you could do that either because that is that is the space value. Um,
Where can I find our day? The whole idea of encode is it starts off with a textual, it accepts a char list and it needs to return a bit string. So the question is, is like, how do you, ha how do you, ha how do you start the accumulator with an empty bit string? Can you just, I mean, I don't know. It's like, can you just say this? I mean, that shows us like empty quotes. Um, that's what you don't want. You know? <sighs> no function clause matching. So the first argument was a space. The second argument was an empty thing. So space did not, yeah, I mean, it thinks it's an empty list, but it did not pattern match into this. Um, I mean, that kind of makes sense because like it's not, it's not a bit string yet, yet, yet. Um, it's a char list. So this is a list. That first, first argument is a list. And so we get that, we split it. I'm actually going to just say this, because that makes it easy. So it'll get the first character and well, it'll encode the head. Um, I don't know. That needs to be in queued and it can't be in code. That's like really repetitive. Variable DNA. Not there yet. Uh, calls DNA code space. It respect it expects a binary value. Of all zero size to um what is what do you mean by argument error? Argument error
I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know why. False. <laughs> Wait, what are you? I mean, that worked. So, okay, so get rid of false. And instead, I say do encode. I just pass the DNA. I pass an accumulator. That should work, right? not gonna work <laughs> it's gonna say argument error I mean the argument is it's having trouble calling do and code probably because of this thing. so I don't know how to represent an empty bit string I don't know how to start the accumulator with an empty bit string. Create a recursive function which takes a code point from the char list and recursively builds the bit string result. Remember, a char list is a list of integer code points. I'll just, I would just pattern. Um,
trying to, I'm going to. Uh, we're going to ask for help. We're going to see how this works. Let me, actually, let me search for a, a bit string. <laughs> what exactly does the value 11 part mean? Hmm. Are we cheating? Uh, completed exercises. code we're not that far off Oh. That's frustrating. <laughs> um Okay. Let's see here. Uh let's collapse. Let's test all of the encoding. Yeah, they all look good. Okay, um, let's do the decoding. Implement decode to accept a bit stronger presentation and gaps and return the decoded as a trial list. Okay, so this is going to be very similar where we're going to have a do decode function. It's going to we're going to call it with the DNA and an empty accumulator. The accumulator in this case being um, an empty trial list. Gradually add to it. So we'll say do decode. And this is where we're going to uh, pattern match the um, We're going to pattern match the bit string in the argument. So the incoming DNA, we're going to grab the first four chunks and the rest of it and, and the accumulator. And then we'll just keep calling uh, do code. Um, call it with rest and then the accumulator, which, um, best way to do it, uh, Code value and the best way you can do that, but 
Oh, you could just say. You could just use the head tail thing. Um, so we'll decode the value. Put it the head of the accumulator. Then we'll need one more. We'll need to define do e code. And when the bit string is empty, uh, oh, you can't call decode, you need to call uh, decode. Let's run this at cursor and see if yes it does. Because we're doing the order wrong. Um Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be I mean, we could do plus plus. That's more expensive, but I think that'll uh, I think that'll work. Um, Uh, well, this is not, I mean, that just returns a character. Um, let's do ACC, won't fail. Accumulates anything. Um, how do I? I don't want to look at the. I'm trying not to cheat. Uh, char list. I mean, it's just a list. So, there's any. Special. My internet's been. <laughs> uh. That'll work. Should be able just to do that. It's not gonna. It says argument error. Plus plus, and the the error is like. You can't add a char list to an individual code point. I think that's what it's yelling at me about. Um, oh, do you need to? Uh, what are you happy about? Binary can kind of fail since the value type. Binary construction will fail. Let's just try this. Uh, let's say you had a, uh, well, we've got DNA. And let's say DNA plus 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 a that should work um a that does not work um 
Yeah, that plus plus should work. Why is that plus plus not? Decode, decode nucleoid gives them the value. That should work. Why does that not work? They're not cheating. Oh, they just they just wrap it in the list. Okay. Uh, we'll put it in brackets. There we go. We'll test all on file. Oh, we've got 24 tests passing. Lovely. Wow. Um, this has been another bad session. Oh, well. Um, all right. Is there anything that we're unhappy? I think this is good. Um, all right. So we're going to exorcism submit lib DNA. We'll see if the analyzer is unhappy. The analyzer is unhappy. Check comments for something to, for some things to learn. Public interfaces of a cut. Oh, they they want us to make private. Okay, well we'll do that. So like, encode is the public method. But do encode is the private method. That's value that. Do those all private. And we'll rerun the tests. We'll resubmit it. And we'll check our second iteration. Looks good. We'll take a peek at the community solutions. Backslash s is what they're using. It's good. Um, rather than thirty two. Uh, I like that. Um, heads and tails. Android. Anything interesting here? So they're just going to use pattern matching in the function argument list to do the value. That was a plot too. Um, do reverse, reverse. So this. Um, take a moment here. This is, I mean, this is a good performance thing. So because of the way we did the list, um, coming back here, uh, you can see that we took the accumulator and we added, added, and we added the second list to it. Um, and that is actually very slow because they, the list in Elixir is a linked list. And so it has to go all the way to the end. To do that addition, um, what this solution did, um, which is commendable, uh, is basically they um, did a more optimized um, collection where they just they kept putting it on the top of the accumulator, and at the end when we said do, then they ran this reverse function, which you know flipped a, flipped it on its head, uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, if you had some if you're doing this kind of code where you're like you're encoding and decoding and it's going to be running a lot um that optimization keep in mind um cool but we're not going to change ours uh i think i'm happy with it for now so we're going to mark this as complete we're going to publish our iteration and we have quote unquote learned bit strings and tail call recursion through another uh slow uh exercise Hopefully. Hopefully we're starting to get over these uh, these issues. I mean, I kind of knew regular I knew regular expressions was going to be tough. I didn't think bit strings were going to be as tough as they were. Um, the other ones, binaries, might be a little tough. Uh, yeah, none of these other ones look really awful. I don't know. I think binaries I'm a little bit worried about. Everything else I'm feeling pretty confident about. So 
hopefully this uh these next ones won't be too bad but um that's it for today um today's friday and next week i'm going to be attending ElixirConf, uh which means i will not be recording these so um you're gonna miss out uh, for a week on that but um i will start recording them again when i get back from ElixirConf. and until then i want to thank you all for watching have a nice weekend and we'll see you next time bye bye